Right out then. Well, as you can probably tell by the camera setup and stuff, today we're going to be doing yet another Pine Phone video. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at what might very well be my favourite Pine Phone operating system, and that is Sailfish OS. And we're going to be taking a look at that right now on the Linux Lounge. So indeed, as I said during the opening, today we're going to be taking a look at Sailfish OS on the Pine Phone. But before we do that, let's quickly talk about how you can install it and what works and what doesn't. So there's actually not a huge amount of information about running Sailfish OS on the Pine Phone. Like there's no website for it or anything like that. Um, most of the information that you can get is from forum posts and on the Pine64 wiki, which both of which are great resources. Now, as you can see from this, um, little bit on the wiki you can install it with a flashing script which I did use it was really easy and it worked perfectly fine as you can see they've got some simple instructions here for you uh, there's some stuff about the username and password if you don't want to run the flashing script you can actually download like ready-made images I think these might be a little bit out of date but I am not completely sure but you should probably just use the flashing script just to be on the safe side and if we continue on, we can see what works and what doesn't work. Um, for some reason, the information about what works and doesn't work was actually removed a while ago. It's a little bit strange. Um, but yeah, you can see that uh, a few things aren't working. The um, webcat browser is built in because the built-in browser is not working at the moment and numerous other things. Also, you can actually uh, do OTA updates which um, is interesting because Sailfish OS actually updates a lot like Ubuntu Touch in that you get regular updates rolled out rather than updating like a traditional Linux distribution, if that makes any sense. So I think that probably makes more sense for people who are once again looking for a more conventional smartphone operating system. Now, as for what works and what doesn't work, well, the most up-to-date resource I can find is this form post. Apparently, it now has power management, which is good, um, but the power management can sometimes mess with the phone a little bit and, you know, make it not wake up properly or that kind of thing. Uh, battery performance is apparently pretty solid over 24 hours with a little bit of use. Uh, calls are apparently still problematic, which is a shame. The camera's not functional, which we'll get onto later. Texting does work sometimes, apparently, and a reboot will fix it if it breaks, which eh, it's not ideal if you're going to be using this as a daily driver, but it's not meant for that yet. And apparently, apart from that, everything else is very smooth, which, yes, it is. Bluetooth apparently works. MTP apparently works. Sailfish OS Connect, which is a really cool program that will let you connect your Sailfish OS device to your computer, also apparently works. And... Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say about this on the computer side of things. So let's go ahead and move back over to the Pine Phone and take a look at Sailfish OS. And indeed, here we are on the Pine Phone running Sailfish OS. Now, as I said during the opening, this is probably without a doubt one of my favorite smartphone operating systems of all time. It's really clean, it's really polished, it works really well, it's really, really fast. It's just all around a fantastic operating system. But there is one problem. I can't actually condone that anyone use this. And the reason being is that it's not entirely free and open source software. Now, most of it is, like the sort of the internal bits, I suppose you could say, are free and open source software. The problem is that the graphical user interface and stuff, i.e. what makes Sailfish OS so nice, isn't actually open source, it's proprietary, which, is a huge shame. I believe that there is a project which takes Sailfish OS and removes all the proprietary bits, but at that point you don't get the really nice Sailfish OS experience. So, kind of take everything said in this review with a grain of salt. I don't really condone using this because it's proprietary, but it is still really nice, and if you're not bothered by proprietary software, well, maybe this is still the operating system for you, but I would still advise looking into Ubuntu Touch. But with that said, let's actually start looking at Sailfish OS. Now, as you can see from me messing around with the phone while I'm talking, this is very, very different from most other operating systems. Swipe in from the left or all right of the home screen and you get your notification stuff. You can also set up some weather things, which is quite cool. Swipe in from the top and you get like a pretty typical kind of control center type thing. You know, you can turn off your Wi-Fi, you can turn on or off mobile data, you can turn on Bluetooth, all that sort of stuff. 
So all that's pretty cool. It's all fairly standard so far. If you swipe up, you get your kind of app drawer, which is very similar to Android, where we can see all of our installed apps. And yeah, well, yeah, that's pretty much the basic UI, but here's where things get cool. If I open up an app, as you can see, it's filled the whole screen. There's no buttons or anything on screen. So you might ask, how do you open or close an app? Well, to do that, you can swipe in from the left or right to return home. And that's where we get like a little card thing. And if we open up another app real quick, you can see that we have two cards. So that's pretty cool. If you press and hold on one, you can move it around. You can get rid of it. So let's just go ahead and do that. If we swipe in from the top, you can close them all at once. If you particularly so desire as well, you can swipe in from the top and just close it from the app itself. And if you swipe up from the bottom, you get access to your app drawer anywhere you go. So this reminds me a lot of Ubuntu Touch, which is pretty much a good thing because Ubuntu Touch is also very nice. Another thing that's quite cool that you've probably noticed is that the app background is actually a blurred version of our wallpaper, which makes everything look really, really nice. And if we swipe in from the top, we can actually um, go ahead and select a different wallpaper. And uh, these are called ambiences for some reason. So let's just go ahead and select this one. So if we go ahead and change that, and we've changed our ambience, and as you see the background's changed, and so has our wallpaper. So I've got to say that makes Sailfish OS look like a really, really nice offering system. So with that said, let's go ahead and see what kind of apps you get with Sailfish OS. And I've got to say, you get a good selection of apps. So let's go ahead and swipe up, and from the top you get a phone app, which presumably does not work on the Pine phone just yet. You get a text messaging app, so actually let's go ahead and take a look at the phone and text messaging. So you got like a dialer, you can uh, go over to your contacts, which, cool. And if we go into the text messaging app, and for some reason the phone has rotated, which yes, auto-rotate actually does work on the Pine phone. And this is probably one of the few operating systems to have it, which is quite cool. So you can, you know, send text and stuff. It's got a pretty uh, nice UI for sending text and stuff. So we we'll just go ahead and close out of those. Also, I don't know if you can hear that, but Selfish West has really pleasing system sounds as well. You get a browser, which here's where things get to be a little bit of a shame. This browser actually doesn't work, and I don't actually know why that is. So as you can see, it's actually not particularly wanting to open, and I think it's actually just crashed the whole entire phone. Now, usually what would happen when you open the browser is that um, web pages just wouldn't render. But as you can see, now it's actually just straight up crashed the Pine phone. So what I'm gonna have to do is go ahead and force reboot this thing, and then we'll get back to doing the review. And here we are again back on the Pine phone. Now, I didn't show you, but the reboot was actually very quick. And as you might have noticed on the lock screen, the Pine phone running Selfish West actually does identify my SIM cards. So that's quite handy. Uh, if we go up again and we keep going through the apps, I will just go ahead and quickly show you the camera app. It doesn't work, but I suppose I might as well demonstrate it. And as you can see, we just get a totally black screen. So apparently you can swipe up to change from the camera in the video mode. That's pointless because the camera does not actually work. And it's not actually seeing that we have two cameras either. So maybe hopefully at some point this will get fixed, but for now the camera doesn't work, as you can see. So let's go ahead and keep going through the app. So let's close out of that. And as you can see, this is really like an efficient way to use a phone. These swipe based gestures are fantastic. You get people, which is a contacts app. You get a store. Now this is pretty cool. Sailfish OS actually has a really strong app library. Now here's the caveat to this store. Unlike most mobile Linux systems, you actually have to make an account to use this, which that's quite annoying. I have an account, but if you don't, you're not getting apps from here. But let's just go ahead and tap on something and install it to show you that yes, in fact, installing apps does work. So as you can see, we can swipe in from the top and then it will go ahead and install it, which this is another big part of the Sailfish OS UI. You get this kind of pull down menu where various options might live. So I'm gonna probably say this now, Sailfish OS is not at all conventional for a smartphone operating system and you're going to have to relearn some stuff if you want to switch to it. But once you get used to it, it's really nice, really intuitive. And in fact, the um, there is actually a tutorial which runs the first time you turn this on. And as you can see, we actually got a text. So, huh, I guess texts do work. So let's just go ahead and close out of that and I'll show you the app that we installed. 
and here we go and as you can see we have sound so let's just go ahead and uh, quickly play a bit of this just to uh, show you that it works so there you go we got a basic game running on the pine phone running selfish last so let's just go ahead and close out of that and continue on with the apps that we have installed so next up you get a gallery app, pretty standard gallery app, but of course it looks nice like everything else on Selfish OS. You get your settings, you get your tutorial, which uh, given how different Selfish OS is from pretty much every other operating system on mobile, you're going to probably need this tutorial. If we keep going you get a calendar, which I think this is probably one of the few mobile operating t uh, mobile optimized calendars for the Pine phone. If we keep going, you get an email client, a media player, which will do your uh, music and stuff. You get a document viewer, you get a notes app. It's a pretty nice little notes app. Um, and once again, all these apps are completely mobile optimized, which makes this a fantastic choice for applying for an operating system, or at least it will be once all the hardware works. You get a clock app, um, and if we keep going, you get a calculator, which looks nice like everything else on the system. You get a weather app, you get a full terminal. Now, this isn't quite as much of a full terminal as some other distributions for the Pine phone, but it does work. And as you can see, we can run like Linux commands and stuff. So uh, there you go, there's top running in the terminal. And uh, the terminal is used for updates and stuff as well. And if we keep going, you get a store man, which effectively what this is, is it's a third party store for Sailfish OS. So this actually doesn't require an account, and you can get a lot of apps here that aren't in the official uh, Selfish West store. There's a lot of good stuff here, so I would probably take a look at it. If we keep going, we get WebCat, which is a web browser that actually does work on the Pine phone by default. And let's just go ahead and uh, quickly just search something up, and I'll show you that yes, indeed, it does work. Uh, the default search engine is Google, which like yikes, but okay. And as you can see, it's actually really, really smooth, which is a bit of a reoccurring theme with Selfish OS on the Pine phone. Everything is really smooth. There's a bit of lag when I bring up the menus and stuff, like the um, app drawer, but like largely everything is really smooth and just generally fantastic to use. And if we keep going through, that's pretty much it. So that's my look at Selfish OS on the Pine phone. As I said earlier, I can't recommend it because it's proprietary. But it is a really, really nice operating system. And I think once the hardware support is improved, this is probably going to be a good option for a lot of people who don't necessarily care about like using completely free and open source software and just want something that just works. Because like I said, most of the apps on here, well all of them, are mobile optimized. It runs really well, like as compared to full Linux distributions on the Pine phone. It looks great. And to be honest, I think that this is something that you could hand to someone who's not very tech savvy and they'll be able to just use it. Um, but like I said in the Ubuntu Touch video, it's still not ready to be daily drivered. If you want to daily driver say Office OS, there are many, many devices that you can use. But once again, I'm going to bring this one out again. If you want a daily drive for Sailfish OS, there's a build of Sailfish OS for the Nexus 5, which works really, really well. Um, but there are better devices for running Sailfish OS. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I thank you for watching it, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>